There are so many things I wish I could tell you. I was born to a fool. Body language speaks volumes without even saying a word. I am your horse and you are my voice. For the love in every horse, bleed, don't flower. Well, Steve, here we go again, year three, and I, the thing keeps getting bigger. And um, better. And I, and I think, you know, as we start to implement a lot of the roots of where this came from, which we did by bringing the cow horse, and then even more so now this year with this cowboy competition, which was a, which was a great thing to see. Fantastic. You know, here's guys that make a living on a horse. Now, you make a living on a horse, and, uh, and I lose a lot of money on a horse, but, but, but it's a different thing. I mean, those guys, I've said it a number of times, they go out, nobody gets to see the way that they do their job. Um, and yet, no one holds themselves to a higher account. So to watch those cowboys uh, come here and these big bright lights, I mean, I, I, I hope everyone understands what a treat that was. It was a huge treat for me. Uh, the crowd loved it, and it was so rewarding to see uh, Brock Schwarzkopf take the win. 17 years old, I said, what do you do up there at the Wagon Hound, cowboy? <laughs> Stupid question, but it still exists in this country, and it was so great to see this kid come in and do what he did against some really grizzled veterans. Yeah, absolutely. And now here we are. We're at the main event, uh, and and I I got to tell you, this is the this is it's just a knife fight. It's murderer's row of the best riders and the best horses, and I say let's just go through each set and kind of talk about who we've got. You know, this, it's interesting how it worked out because this first set is all first timers. Right. They've never, they've never shown at the Run for a Million before. Um, you got Billy William, Billy Williams on Gunning for Chicks, uh, Jordan McBurney on No Man's Whiskey, you got Matt Palmer on Frozen Shining Gun, and Francesco Martinelli on Smoking Trash. And that's an interesting group because if you just look at the numbers, the real wild card here is Frozen Shining Gun. Yep. Matt Palmer had a client buy him six weeks ago from Poland. This horse had a stumble and just missed out in the qualifier, but he was the talk of that class there in Scottsdale. Like, oh man, if that horse hadn't broken gate, yep. he could have won it. And um, Matt punched his ticket to come to this and he wasn't messing around. He wanted to bring the best partner he could to it. I'm thrilled to see this horse. One of the things I love about this event, it is as drawn out some great horses that had come out of retirement for it, been imported from Europe. He's a wild card. I think Francesco Martinotti and Smoke and Trash in that first set's really the sure thing. I do too. The horse is a 75 machine. I don't know if he's got enough top end horsepower to win this, but he's gonna go out and mark his 75. I talked to Francesco yesterday, how's the bay horse? He's like the same. He said, I've ridden him yep. three times since I've been here. He's ready. Yep. And Francesco is, is hit a stride right now. You can see when these, and you've been around this a while, I've been around it a while, and you see these young guys come up. We're gonna talk about another one later uh, in the last set. And they, they hit that, their training has come to a certain point, their riding, their showmanship, and their confidence have all come together. You know, you could say that, that Jordan McBurney's the salty vet in this deal. She's been around it for so long, um, and she's an aggressive rider. And, and I think that she's used to bright lights, she's made finals and everything, so I think that she's someone that, that you can't discount. Um, but you gotta wonder, we're gonna find out with Billy and we're gonna find out with Matt, it, it, you know, are you ready for something of this scale? It's hard to prepare anyone for the crowd, for the lights, for the pomp of this thing. Um, you almost gotta treat it like a football team now and pump crowd noise into your practice. You really do. Uh, because the, the verbal commands and the things that riders normally do to these horses, they're out the window here because the noise is deafening. It's really like a playoff sporting event, the atmosphere at this. Yeah, and that's it, what makes it really it is. Next up, we've got, I mean, now, now we step into, I mean, look at this. Nathan Piper on Patriot. Uh, Jason Van Landingham on Best Shine. Andrea Fapani on Trash Talk and Spook, and then Craig Schmersel on a horse that he trained, What a Wave, that, I mean, it's a fantastic horse. No one's seen it in a while. Um, handicap that for me. Oh, that's a tough one, because What a Wave, if he plays his game, now that horse is 14 now. You mentioned Craig showed him, won a lot on him, won a lot on his sire, sells him to Europe. They win a world title on him over yep. there, and those European open horses are probably as serious as anything we yes. have here because there's such an emphasis on that where it's more aged events here. That horse is capable of taking the lid off this yes. thing. Uh, 
you know, Nathan Piper and Patriot, they've done it, they've done it, they've done it again. That horse never, he's a triple crown winner, yep. never fails to answer the call. And that's what's crazy about this reigning. Here in this just one set of four horses, I don't make the triple crown winner my favorite, as great as he is. <laughs> And I don't know what Fapani's up to on Trash Talk and Spook. He's shown that horse one time, essentially, yep. in the last year. Showed him one go at Scottsdale. Was a 231, 232, I can't remember. Yes. Was spectacular. But when I didn't see him show him at the NRBC in the Derby, I thought there must be something about that horse he doesn't trust. Well, turns out he had a plan all along. Saved him. He's pointed that horse just toward this yep. event. And he made that decision to ho show him over all bets are off, who we know is capable of marking as big a score as any horse here on the fairground. Yeah. So he must fully believe in trash talk and spook. And, you know, I, you know, I'll probably pick him in that group just because I saw what he did recently. And we all have a little bit of recency bias. But Best Shine and Jason Van Landingham are going to put pressure on the judges. Yes. Jason's such a great athlete. Best Shine's one of those horses that has fully bought into what Jason's yep. doing. He'll go wherever Jason sends him, and you know Jason's not going to get cheated. I'd hate to try and pick just this four-horse set. I mean, it, 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 I'm not saying the winner's in this set, but the winner very well could be in this set. Very well could come from that set. But, but then the winner could be in the... There is a winner in the next set, and there's also <laughs> one that tied for the lead and had a runoff. So next up, you got Sean Flaherty on Spook's Got a Spark. You got Kate McCutcheon on Modern Gun. You got Danny Trembley on Tinker with Dreams, and you got Fernando Salgado on Going to Be a Bright Star. Again, it's, I mean, what what can you, what has Spooks Got a Spark not done except made an, a, every time I've seen that horse show over the past three years, he's marked a 228. Yeah, and if you talk to Sean Flaherty, he loves this horse. Mm -hmm. He says that's the sweetest, easiest, most athletic horse. When he brought him out for the, uh, for the uh, qualifier in Scottsdale, he laid over at my house. The day before he went and won that qualifier on him a couple years ago, yep. he jogged him around my arena about 15 minutes. That's it. <laughs> that was his prep time. That horse is so dialed in and he yep. believes in him so much. Sean's such an accurate rider. Um, you know, only horse to make this three years in a row. Yep. All three, every run for me we've ever had, Spook's got a spark's been here. Um, tough to count that one out. Yep. Uh, you go down the list, Modern Gun and Cade McCutcheon. Cade's won it before. Modern Gun, if there's a horse here that's capable of producing that 77, 78 run, he's fully capable of doing that. And that's why Cade chose him is because he knew he could take the pressure. He knew that right. that horse would thrive when you go ask for a 230. You know, some of them, and I've, and I've got one that Matt Mills showed last year, and I told him, I said, you're going to have to take your 225 like a man because there isn't, <laughs> his brain can't take the 230. Sure. And if you try, you're going to end up with a 214, which is what happened. And obviously, I can't fault him for going in there and not trying to win. Who wants to go chase seventh place? Uh, but that's why that's why Cade chose this horse. He knew he could take the pressure and thrived under it, and and he's done it. He's won it. Uh, he's won it at every you know as an on pro on this horse. He's won. He showed this horse on the on Yellowstone. Hey, the lights didn't scare him. Cameras didn't scare him. But giant jib machines swinging by him. Did nothing. Nothing rattled the horse. So you can't. You can't. And then and then we got Tinker with Dreams. Uh, no one's going to accuse that of being a nice horse, but it is a nice horse. He's that not horse friendly, is. but he's he is that horse can that's a, there is a two thirty in that horse all day long. That horse is electric, and you know we talk about him. Oh, by the way, he's just a world champion. Yeah, you know that's how deep this field is. You know, he got a horse that's the only horse that's been three times to this event. The great modern gun, Danny Trembley's riding his own world champion, yep. and then he ran that out with Fernando Salgado and going to be a bright star. Love Fernando, but it's easy to get lost in that group yeah, right there. It, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. And yet, uh, Fernando's done a lot on that horse. I'll tell you this. You look at the standings right now in the NRHA, the number one leading rider this year. It's not Sean Flaherty. It's not Andrea. It's not Matt Mills. Fernando Salgado yep. right now is the leading rider in the NRHA. Yep. He's on a roll this year. So I like their chances too. And then we're going to finish this up with the guy that is absolutely on fire right now as talented as a talented writer as there is as accomplished as there is and yet somehow he's found another gear uh starting with the futurity and then all of 2022 on america's next top gun casey deary uh, i mean and then and behind that another one of these young guys that found his stride in josh tishman on on gonna ricochet then you've got sean mcburney on trashy little lady and then you've got Arno on Miss Dreaming. 
Yeah, that is a great set here. I think what's interesting, Josh Tishman's an assistant to Casey Deary, wins the shootout last year. They go back to back, the teacher, then the student, Casey Deary first on America's Next Top Gun. I feel like if Top Gun will get run to his stops, if this pin's big enough for him to show, like you watch that horse on their videos when he's on Casey's big track at home. Yeah. That horse is just the most next level stopper. If this straightaway is long enough for him to reach top speed, that horse is capable of just blowing the lid off this tonight. But then Josh proved when he won the showdown last year or the shootout on Gunnar Ricochet, he's got that score in him yeah. too. Yeah. And it's a legit plus one and a half turner. You look at Great Sean circler. Yeah. I mean, and he's there. I watched Casey and um, Josh do their warm up this morning. And it was basically, I had so much fun just sitting down in the arena this morning watching the riders make their preps. It's like watching a Super Bowl team do a walkthrough yeah. the day of. Yeah. Everybody was just so cool. And Casey and Josh were just working on little things and lead departures and let's steer straight across the middle. No stop and turn and that's all done. Yeah. I mean, those horses are ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, just get them the fresh, get them stretched out. Yeah. So then you got Sean McBurney on Trashy Little Lady. And, and this is interesting because Sean is somebody who prides himself on, on really showing the horse off correct, as correct and, and a beautiful rider and a very still rider and, and a graceful rider, and that's what the horses look like. The question is, with, with some of these horses that are so violently physical, um, is he gonna try and change his style? I don't think he will, and he's riding a four-year-old mare, the youngest one in the competition, but Sean owns this run for a million. Only Ranch has produced three horses that are here in the finals. Yeah. Husband and wife team, he and his wife, Jordan, made it both here. That's incredible when you think about yep. 16 riders, well, 15, 16 this year. Two of them from the same barn. Yep. Two of the horses they raised, um, Danny Tremblay's great horse, Tinker with Dreams, a product of that Rhodes River yep. Ranch breeding program. Yep. So I'm not counting Sean out for that reason. That kind of success pointed to this big event, was when he's been able to do that, unbelievable. But you look at that last horse in there, Ms. Dreamy. That mare's beyond a legend, she's an icon. Yep. Silver medalist at the World Equestrian Games. She's best known for her performance at the AQHA World Show yeah. where the bridle broke. She goes out and runs a 230 without the bridle. Yes. I mean, just like never yeah. before seen anything like that before or since. That was of course with Dan Hush. She's on with Arno Honstetter tonight. So much heart that horse, and you can't count her out. And she's she's and, and talent, not just heart, but the combination. Yeah, and she's um, 12, 13 years old. I mean, but she loves it. They tried to retire her, make her a broodmare. She wanted back in the barn. Yeah. You know, and and you know, that's what's so great about this. This is exactly what I envisioned when when I came up with this idea to see how we extend the lives of these the, the show careers of these horses beyond their six-year-old year. And 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 now to get to see 10 and 12 and 14 year old horses well, coming in here and being extremely competitive, and obviously you knew they would be, um, you know, that was the goal. Uh, and, and it's really exciting to see it come to fruition. I think the thing you've done, Taylor, with this kind of, you know, it, the money's great at this show, but it's become such an event now. It's such a sought after title that what we've seen here is that it has drawn out the greatest reigning horses in the world. I mean, when you're, you know, look at the number of horses that were imported from Europe for this. Yep. You know, the guys that looked around here and they're like, okay, you got one pitcher to pitch game seven. You can have anybody you want. I mean, that, it's a worldwide search. The same thing <laughs> Flying going across, here. quarantining for a month, you bet. You know, and then when you see guys like Fapani who have, they've pointed toward this for a year. He showed one time on the horse he's gonna show here, Trash Talking Spook, and looking back at it now, I see that was tune-up race. Yep. You know, he, he's had a plan the whole way, so the payoff from all that should be for reigning fans, that this should be the most spectacular reigning we've ever seen. You gonna pick one? Uh, if I had to pick a horse just based on, you know, I'd take my luck with any of them, but, you know, I'd probably take Trash Talking Spook and P Fapani just because, you know, if this was a horse race, and they talk about how horses come into the Kentucky Derby, and you know, they ran three weeks ago. This horse has been peaked for this event. I know that horse is capable of doing just phenomenal next level maneuvers. So if he handles the crowd, which got the platinum vintage a little bit yep. last year, yep. Andrea told me, you know, he was 225 and a half. He wasn't bad, but he got in there yeah. in the crowd and he just felt tired enough that couldn't show him like I wanted to. But, um, you know, Fapani, 
he's, uh, he's an assassin. You know, he's got that laser-like focus, and I know he stayed awake at night trying to figure, he hasn't won this event. I know. And you know that and bothers him. it bothers him, and because it bothers him, and he's gonna have that chip on his shoulder, I'm gonna pick the hot hand in this game right now. I'm gonna go ahead and pick Casey Deary in America's ah, Top Gun. Nobody's gonna argue with you there. I mean, you could make a case for every single horse in here, yeah. but, yeah. Um, you know, I throw four or five horses in there in that group. America's Next Top Gun. I don't think we've seen the best out of Spook's got a spark. No. And if Sean gets but, him but by the way, off tonight, and that means a 228, a 228, and a 229 and a half. That's what we've seen out of that <laughs> And horse. we haven't seen the best of him yet. So, you know, there's a great group here. I don't know who's going to emerge, but that's what makes this so great. I mean, yep. you've got the best of the best, and now we just get to sit back and watch the cream rise to the top. I'm thrilled as a reigning fan to see this. Yeah, I'm super excited. As always, Steve, uh, thanks for being here every year with us, uh, even year one when none of us knew what the hell this was. <laughs> I said, will you do this? And you said, yeah, let's I go. love it, and I love the Sense Studio. I want to thank Sense for what they've done yep, because this, this has great. been a great vehicle to communicate to the fans at home. People that aren't here want to be here. Yep. And um, it's just been an incredible event. I just can't thank you and Mandy enough. And that sentiment's been shared by so many people with me. We're glad we get to be a part of this. This is something that wouldn't have been a part of our life. If you, and I told Mandy last week, I said, you know, because you had the vision to go big, a lot of other people now are getting to benefit from that. And I, I just can't say enough good things about it. Well, I, I thank you. And, and you know, the goal was to re-energize our sport, which I felt was having difficulty recovering from that recession in 2010 and 12. Yeah. And I think it's done it. And I think you've seen, I, you've seen other people step up. You've seen the NRHA step up and added money to the Derby and added money to, to the, a lot of money to the futurity. And now we're talking about, uh, uh, they're talking about doing uh, exhibitions during the American and exposing even more people to it. And I, I think it's all fantastic. Uh, I, I've never had more fun losing money in my life than putting on this horse show. Well, <laughs> and, so many uh, people have benefited. And my wife and I were talking about this the other night. You know, in such a short amount of time, when you ask these riders at just about every level, you know, it's always, oh, I want to win the Futurity or maybe I'd like to win the Derby. Run for a million's it now. Yep. People are building their year around coming to this horse show and trying to have success here. And it's not just the money, Taylor, I really believe that. It's just that this has become such a one-off, great standalone event that people yeah. want to be a part of it. And it's fun, it's fun to see people from all over the world and all over the country come. Fans of horses, rainers, all the cow horse guys are obviously here and the cutters have come in and there's dressage trainers that have come in just to see this thing. And it's and it's become a Super Bowl and it's, man, it's a lot of fun. I can't wait, let's go now. Let's do it, let's all do right. it. The two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. Countless early mornings and many late nights, we have built this from the ground up. I'm an athlete. I'm obsessed with it. For the love in every horse. Lead, don't follow.